The Twits, read by the teachers of SIS. Hairy faces. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it's impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big a job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week like us on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hair dryer? Do they rub hair tonic in it to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed? Or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which will probably be as soon as you step out on the street, maybe you will look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Mr. Twit. Mr. Twit was one of these very hairy faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose, was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and his ear holes. Mr. Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth, he was neither of these things. Mr. Twit was a twit. He was born a twit, and now, at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr. Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted, as it does on most hairy-faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck straight out like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr. Twit wash this bristly, nail-brushy face of his? The answer is never. Not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it in years. Dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary face, an hairy face like yours or mine, simply gets a bit smudgy if it's not washed enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairs especially food, things like gravy get right in amongst the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eat his lunch and you will notice then even if he opens his mouth very wide it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result and because he never washed there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or his sleeve while he was eating. But if you looked closely, not that you'd ever want to, you'd see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken and livers and all the other disgusting things that Mr Twit liked to eat. Can you see? If you looked closer still, hold your noses ladies and gentlemen, if you peered deep into the moustachy bristles sticking out over his top lip, you would see much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that had been there for months and months and months. 
like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tinned sardine. Because of all this, Mr Twit never really went hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here or there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is Mr Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. Mrs Twit. Mrs Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because at any rate, that would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs Twit wasn't born ugly. She had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on their face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can barely look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth, but if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs Twit's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason she carried a stick was that she could hit things with it. Things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. The glass eye. You can play a lot of tricks with a glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again any time you like. You can bet your life Mrs Twit knew all of the tricks. One morning, she took out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr Twit sat there drinking the beer slowly. The froth made a white ring on the hairs around his mouth. He wiped the white froth onto his sleeve and wiped his sleeve on his trousers. You're plotting something, Mrs Twit said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see that she had taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs Twit was right. Mr Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think up a really nasty trick he could plan his wife that day. You'd better be careful, Mrs Twit said, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr Twit said. He went on drinking his beer and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman. Suddenly, as Mr Twit tipped the last drop of beer down his throat, he caught sight of Mrs Twit's awful glass eye staring up at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. I told you I was watching you, cackled Mrs Twit. I've got eyes everywhere, so you'd better be careful. The frog. To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr Twit decided that he would put a frog in Mrs Twit's bed. He caught the big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs. Twit was get in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr. Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs. Twit came back and climbed into bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itchy. Dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then, all at once, she felt something cold and slimy crawling all over her feet. She screamed. What's the matter with you, Mr. Twit said. 
Help, screamed Mrs. Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed. I'll bet it's that giant skilly wiggler I saw on the floor just now, Mr. Twit said. That what, screamed Mrs. Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away. It's got teeth like screwdrivers, Mr. Twit said. Help, screamed Mrs. Twit. Save me, it's all over my feet. It'll bite off your toes, said Mr. Twit. Mrs. Twit fainted. Mr. Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs. Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. He started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a great time. Then Mrs. Mrs. Twit came too. The frog had just jumped on her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone at bed at night. She screamed again. By jolly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, said Mr. Twit. It'll bite off your nose. Mrs. Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the knife on the sofa. The frogs went to sleep on her pillow.